So hello, everyone. We're very excited to be here today at the 2017 OWASP convention. Uh, this is our third time, actually. Recently, we've spoken at the AppSec in Europe. And this time, we want to talk to you about a very important matter, the Game of Thrones. But not just any thrones, the product throne and the security throne. Now, how many of you are Game of Thrones fans? <laughs> okay. How many of you don't know what I'm talking about? Okay, it's uh, half and half. <laughs> so you should you should look at the series. Uh, you can catch up with us later. It's one of the most popular series and uh, one of the best, actually, in my opinion. And even if you've ha you haven't heard of it, uh, maybe you've heard that a recent recently a certain politician said the Game of Thrones can be used as a handbook for politicians. So we think it's not just for them. Specifically, the first scene between the meeting between Jon Snow and Daenerys, shown in the last season, season seven. Now, I'm sorry for the spoiler, but just Google it, trust me. That scene is how this lecture was born. Dear PM, uh, I was uh, recently came to you to warn you about danger approaches. The army of hackers coming. They're going to steal all our customers' data. What? That's just a fairy tale. We've had a strong firewall for years, and there's never been a breach. Listen to me. I was there. I was behind the firewall. I saw them. The hackers are real. And uh, you have three strong development teams. Why do you not put them on the task to close all vulnerabilities we have? then we can stand a chance. Yes, I understand you, but there's a bigger issue here. I received the last Gartner report, and our compet competitors have our place, the upper right quadrant. That belongs to us. If anything, I'm sending my teams out on that task. After that, maybe I can help you defend our customers. Unfortunately, it might be too late. It might be nothing left to defend. So, you get it, right? Jon Snow. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Thank you. But what do you think? Does this conversation happen between the business and the security? Never. <laughs> I was just going to ask you how often do you think it happens, if you think it happens. But you're right. It never happens. It doesn't happen. Actually, in reality, this wall is not in the land far, far away, but it is right here. Now, luckily enough, Elena is a security officer. Elena, you can come closer to me. <laughs> Luckily enough, Elena is a security officer, and I'm a product manager, and we do speak, a lot actually. So we've come to share with you our knowledge and tools about how you can break this wall in your organization. But first, we need to find common goals, a common language. And what is the mother tongue of all product managers? Can you guess? Money. Of course, money. But seriously, uh, what real uh, goals which uh, product manager and security person can share? Really, we have actually big list. But in big picture, we can say that we both want to build our customer trust while we create a solid reputation for our company. And definitely, we want to uh, get some profit uh, by, during this process. But needless to say, this can only be gained with joint effort. Those of you who, and team spirit, those of you who saw our former presentation know that we're strong believers in joint effort and team spirit. And this can only be gained if you not just talk, start talking, but also act as one team. So who are we and why we are standing on the stage today? Obviously to illustrate you that product manager and security lead can talk when they have shared goals. And our goal today is share with you our experience and knowledge and uh, illustrate how you can get our uh, knowledge and apply in your organizations too. So Elena represents the security side of the project. She brings vast experience in both software development and security areas. She went through various roles such as software developer, technical lead, uh, system architect, and for the last four years as application security lead. And the front represents the product side of the uh, team responsible on roadmap, feature prioritization, budget, and also she has a very deep knowledge and experience in both software development and product and project management. That's me. 
So first, before we dive in uh, into the practical aspects, I would, I would like to give you some deep insight about the product management role. Who is the product manager and what does he do all day? So as we heard before, the mother tongue of all product managers is money. But is that really reality or is that just a stigma? So let's look at the stigma versus reality table. So first of all, we have the busiest person in the company who sees only dollars versus innovation and technology. He is the anti-star, anti-security, anti-technology, anti-technical debt, anti-automation, and anti-everything that is efficient. On the reality side, we still have the busiest person in the company. But did you ever ask yourselves why? This is because the product manager engages in various stuff, such as product definition, roadmap definition, feature definition, meets with customers, uh, participates in sales meetings, uh, strategy mapping, uh, competitive analysis, and of course, defines the product lifecycle, which we will talk about uh, in a minute. And dollars versus uh, technology? Of course, but that is only because there is a budget to look after. The pricing model, the licensing model, that is the sole responsibility of the product manager. And the empty star? Well, the product manager has to take hard decisions of prioritization. And maybe this is why everyone views him as the empty star. So as you can see, the product manager has to juggle so many balls in the air that every ball that you put in increases the chance of everything falling. So we, do we blame him for overlooking security? Yes, we do. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, you just should not do this alone. Uh, if two people jungle together, we can have more balls in the air and have much bigger wow effect. So how we suggest to solve it? We suggest to align product management processes with security processes. Did you say processes? That's my point. I just love processes. So now I want to explain some, something to you, the product life cycle. This is a product life cycle that every product undergoes. It's called the PLM the product lifecycle management. It is an enterprise-wide discipline that provides guidelines and management for a full life cycle, for a full product life cycle, from design and concept through manufacturing and production to service and sales. The PLM integrates between systems, people, and processes. It's very similar to the project management life cycle, but from the content point of view. And it is not just only for software technology, but it is also a business strategy. Let's go over the uh, stages in short. In the, we have the inception. This is where we conceive the product, where we just you know, lay down our wish lists and thoughts, our roadmap with no limits of efforts and capacity. Wouldn't that be great? There's the definition stage where we define the features functionality. There's the planning stage where we do the planning together with the development teams and prioritize. There's the design stage uh, where we define more features, prioritize more, get into more details. I'll talk about that later. We approve POCs and approve demos of done features. This is where the manufacturing gets done, the development and the QA. Then we have the release. The product manager approves the sign-off, and we have the release on production. And then we have service and post-production, where the dev gives support, and the product engages in up sales and stuff like that. Now, uh, when we wanted to uh, uh, combine the PLM with the development life cycle, we needed uh, to align to the development methodologies, which are, as you guess, or which is, as you guess, agile. So we're looking at the agile, we looked at the agile principles to see how they can come to our benefit. And this is what we found. Principles like short cycles, rapid delivery, continuous delivery, and immediate response give us stuff like re reduced time to market and short turnovers. Principles like transparency, empowerment, sync ceremonies like dailies and scrum of scrums, and early detection give us improved quality and improved reliability, and also improve our forecast for cost and timelines. Uh, principles like prioritize backlog at all times and MVP give us an option to give the customer exactly what they need, right? The customer is exactly what they need. So we're not just effective, but we're also efficient. And in addition, it gives us an option to keep the customer advantage if something changes in the market. Principles like cross-function collaboration give us maximized supply chain cooperation. But, you know, there is a misconception that Agile is an anarchy. The endless iterations give you a feeling that you can endlessly revisit scope. And if you don't make it on time on this sprint, you can always postpone to the next sprint. 
So we needed a framework to combine the PLM principles with the Agile principles. Something that will align to the dev life cycle, something that will, to, will align to the security life cycle, something that will give us pace, heartbeat, and milestones. So this is why we defined our own product life cycle management framework. And this is the framework uh, we defined. Okay, as you can see, on the purple background, we have the product life cycle stages. And on the blue background, I don't know if you can differentiate here, and on the blue background, you have the dev stages. Uh, we want to show you how we, how we align them. So first of all, in the inception stage, as I said before, this is uh, the conceive, where, where we conceive the product. We also do the market research and the competitive analysis. We define the vision and the strategy. And the development does not have a correspondence stage here. But then when we get into the definition stage, as you can see, we combine the definition and the planning stage, which in the PNM were two different stages. Here we combine them. We align that to the planning stage of the development. It's where we break down to themes and break down to features, okay. do the priority, talk a little bit about high-level effort estimates. Then we get into the design stage. The design stage is the big circle. This is where we break down even more to user stories, talk about the UI and the UX, get, get down uh, to, the, to the practical stuff. And of course, uh, the correspondent uh, development stage is the dev and the QA, uh, where we manufacture the product. Of course, in reality, uh, it's iterative and it's done uh, upon some sprints, not, not just one, how it looks here. Uh, so, as, you, as I said before, this framework is easily adjustable to other frameworks, like the dev framework and the security framework. Let's talk about secure development uh, lifecycle management framework. It's a, uh, as I said, uh, we need framework to ensure that we have all security controls embedded on proper development stages. So we created this framework. We presented it at, uh, exactly one year ago on our previous talk. So I just shortly remind you this main idea of this framework. You possibly uh, familiar with such frameworks from Microsoft or maybe Oracle or other big vendors. Uh, so what we do, we just map security activities on relevant development stages. For example, the performance security plan on planning stage, uh, trade modeling on design stage, etc. Uh, even this uh, framework was built originally for big legacy products with water waterfall development. We uh, firstly understood that we need to adjust this framework for uh, modern reality. And modern reality is agile development. So uh, the simplest way is uh, Microsoft, for example, did uh, they create a separate framework for agile SDLC. In our case, we already have the framework fully embedded in our, in our organization policies and processes, and so we wasn't so, uh, we weren't so uh, flexible, and we just study, started to study deeper the Agile principles and that is understood that we can take exactly the same activities, make them shorter, more lightweight, and with fast return, and run them iteratively. So we didn't make big changes in our framework, we just adjust our activities according to Agile principles. So uh, maybe you're asking yourself, uh, why do we need this? Um, we are big believers in the uh, embedding of security on early stages of development. So how many of you already heard the term shift left? Do we have someone who didn't heard it? In any case, we prepared the slide, so we have to remind you what this uh, importance and uh, meaning of this uh, movement. So historically, many organizations started their uh, security program in reactive mode. It means some incident happened. It means that. Yeah. <laughs> there. Yeah. It means that. I'm just, I'm just wondering. Everyone can hear Elena because she's a little bit far far. Okay. And um, it's uh, just remind the situation. You want to build something. You came to construction company, and they say, "You oh, we don't care about fire protection. We have fire department. Call them when fire starts." Uh, you think it's a very old approach. It was uh, once upon a time. No, we just uh, had a conversation with one product manager. Fortunately, not from our organizations. And he said, "Why are we here about security? We have security department." In another word, call them when fire starts. 
So many organizations already understood the problem and started to implement security activities before release, but after uh, all development finished and all code fully uh, implemented and all resources moved to next release. Uh, the shift left movement say, let's move to the big circle, this uh, endless iteration cycle of design, development, and test. And many people think if we are there with security activities, the mission is accomplished. Right? Yes, it's a great achievement. It's a really great achievement, but we want to be even left. We believe that planning is a crucial part of any successful security program in organization. If I continue the analogy with the construction, we want to be here when you plan the building even before the first drawing is started. Because it might affect your material selection. It might affect the amount of windows and doors you need to create. It might affect, uh, I don't know, water uh, supply location and maybe you need to add proactive, proactive controls such as sprinklers, for example. So SLM is our answer on this demand. We drew these uh, both frameworks in the shape uh, uh, exactly on purpose, because we want to say that ideally someday we will have only one framework, product secure life cycle management framework. Let's say this again, product secure life cycle management framework. Meanwhile, uh, from different reasons, organizational, uh, cultural, Tools-wise, these two frameworks exist in parallel. And our goal is to connect the corresponding stages of these two frameworks and attract the attention of product manager to make him or her as a real security ambassador. So how do we achieve the connection points between these two frameworks? So first of all, of course, we need to identify the connection points of the two frameworks. Then we need to align the activities that happen in these connection points. Then we need to define the responsibilities and deliverables of everyone. And then we need to track the progress, of course. So we wanted to make the security element an inseparable part of the product lifecycle management. So what we did is created mutual checkpoints. Now, you might remember from our previous uh, presentation that we had five main checkpoints when interacting between security and development. Okay, you can see them there. But when communicating between security and product management, we have only three checkpoints. Okay, you can see what we have in every checkpoint in every one of the disciplines, the development, the product manager, and security. So three checkpoints, that less, that's less than five, which makes it easier and less intense for you to adopt, right? So let's dive in into the checkpoints. So first we have the kickoff. The kickoff is uh, actually our first all hands meeting where all the governance team meets together. What we do here is we briefly talk about the roadmap in terms of content and timeline. Then we dive into the upcoming release and we talk a little bit about the features, explain what we mean, we talk about the timeline, and of course we talk about the definition of done of this release, the release criteria. And let me underline that security criteria is part of the release criteria. Also, we talk about the capacity and efforts estimates in high level, and we make sure we have a security bucket in place. As you remember, this is done in conjunction or just before the planning of the dev, so we make sure we have a security bucket, and we ask the security team to get back to us with any inputs or efforts that can affect the dev team. We think this meeting is very, very crucial in laying the expectations from the product manager side, it's where I lay my expectations from the governance forum, the dev, the QA, the security, the marketing, the documentations, the operations. And this way I create a core team that, is work, that works together towards a common and clear goal. How do we do this? Well, it's a scheduled meeting. We have a presentation template. In the presentation, of course, we have all the tasks aligned with due dates. And for every task, we have a governance team provider and a governance team consumer. And of course, we also have our planning tool in which we do the capacity calculations and the effort estimates calculations. So just to give you an idea, this is not exactly how it looks, but just to give you an idea of some screenshots of what we do. So this is the roadmap for 2017. We look at how many releases we will have, how they align the sprints, when we do we have the stagings, and go live. This is uh, drilled down to the upcoming release. As you can see, we can see when we have the kickoff, 
the sign off which I will talk to you about, and the design stage, which both, oops, I'm sorry, both Elena and I will talk to you about. We can see when that happens. Then we have the tool of the governance team. As you can see, we have uh, focal points from all the disciplines, product marketing, pre-sales, and R&D, and et cetera. But what I underlined here is that we have the security focal point as part of the governance team. And Elena, of course, is that focal point. I had to raise all the other names. In addition, we have our planning uh, tool, which we use Excel uh, for capacity planning. And of course, the features effort estimates per team and we, with priority, of course. So just to tell you here, you can see that we have a lot of tools, but this shouldn't stop you. Uh, the many tools is because, you know, in an organization, every discipline uses another tool. But this is a challenge, but we still do it. And we want to show you that where, where there is a will, there is a way. So the design stage that comes after the kickoff, you might remember this is the manufacturing point. This is where the dev and QA and uh, security meet to manufacture the product. Okay, so uh, here what we do is the product keeps getting more mature and detailed input into the R&D teams, okay? And it is where the input gets into the factory and is digested by the dev teams and QA teams and also the security teams. Now here in the design stage, we have the five checkpoints I talked to you about before. We have bi-weekly ceremonies between dev and security that we talked about in our former talk, integrating security in agile project management. Now if you didn't hear that, uh, you can, uh, Elena will dive into that shortly, and she will illustrate how if you bring in the product manager into these joint checkpoints between the development and the security team in the main development stage, you get the business on your side. You get continuous real-time prioritization. You get resource allocation changes if needed. And you get waivers approvals review, maybe if you need them, and risk approvals review if you need them. And you get an engaged product manager in the main stage of the development. Uh, I would like to deep, deep dive now in the security by weekly meetings that we have. So um, now we will have short flashback uh, and we talk about the three uh, checkpoints we have in development and security process. But as uh, Franz said, uh, these uh, checkpoints always come in coordination with product manager because we're doing a lot of activities here, content review, threat modeling, and security assessment, and any of this activity might lead to content uh, changes. Uh, for example, threat modeling might lead to complete feature redefinition or just add a couple of new user stories to it. So let's uh, take a look on the checkpoints, content review. I'm sorry, the two clicks. Okay. Uh, you see our team has all resources and we need <laughs> to coordinate with them. Uh, so first of all, content review. What we are doing on content review, we perform security impact labeling. We take all new content, we do this iteratively. Every time when new content is inserted in the release, we are doing the security impact labeling. Uh, this uh, helps us to identify most risky additions to our release and concentrate on them. The uh, activity performed by security lead and developer um, focal points. At the end of the activity, we have very valuable outcome. We know complete picture of, our, of the release from the security perspective. We have prioritized backlog item list for uh, security assessment stage. We will talk about this later. And we have candidates for design review, very important uh, activity, which we are running continuously. So design review, this is developer-friendly name of threat modeling. And um, it's not only light of pronunciation, but we also run it uh, in the lightweight mode. Because according to agile principles, flexibility, MVP, and fast turnover, we need to perform this as uh, soon as design of the feature started. So we have our own methodology of threat modeling. I cannot elaborate it here due to the time restrictions. But in general, what we are doing, we split this uh, feature on different data flows, uh, put these flows in uh, nine security patterns we define, such as authentication, authorization, security communication, etc., and apply theoretical threats on every flow in every pattern. <laughs> and um, I'm sorry. Uh, the end of the activity, we have list of theoretical, theoretical risks, which might be inserted by this feature. 
And uh, development team submitted relevant user stories or redefined the feature accordingly. And as I said, it must be done with coordination with the product manager because it's required reprioritization and might be redefinition of the content. Next, uh, very important security activity, this is uh, security assessment. This is manual penetration testing we are doing when a uh, feature is done. It provides us uh, confirmation that the uh, code implemented properly from secu security perspective. The agreed mitigation were implemented and no new vulnerabilities were inserted. This uh, activity done by penetration tester experts, external or internal, uh, external might be third party, you can invite uh, on demand or have a constant contract with them. Uh, we have uh, different, this is a uh, penetration test is different from the classical penetration test which I did doing up on product deployment. Because we very restricted in time, we very focused, so we selected the white box approach. It means our expert have full access to product insights such as direct communication to development team or even code access. Uh, any case, uh, security assessment that is very important is always done when feature is done because you cannot run penetration testing when feature is not functional. So, uh, and uh, it's, uh, as I said, according to agile principles, we need to fast uh, turn over. So our recommendation approach is to automate security assessment as well. You can use any security assessment tool such as static code analysis, dynamic scanner, third party scanner, infra scanner, in any combination in your own timelines. It means you receive feedback on almost every code change or configuration change or dependency update. Uh, we raise this, this topic here because again, this is a very powerful tool but requires resources and budget. So you should have product manager on your side to successfully embed the automation project in your development lifecycle. And finally, we have the sign-off. That's the third checkpoint. Now, I want to tell you something about this check, these checkpoints. These mutual checkpoints are very, very critical for the communication because it is where we can do, we can identify the uh, with, together with the governance team all the gaps and risks, and we can find the uh, proper measures to fix them. So, the sign-off is the uh, release status. Uh, this is where we get the big picture. Uh, we look at the release criteria, the definition of done, we check our KPIs, we look at the bug numbers, and we look that it doesn't exceed the release criteria. We look at all our uh, uh, risk assessment forms, uh, aka waivers, that they're all signed. Uh, we look at our security grade. As I told you, I'm talking about the release criteria more, but of course we look at the general uh, release criteria. And of course, we also have statuses during the release, but that's a project management role. I'm not talking about that now. I'm talking about only the product management checkpoints. So the product management the manager gets in here in the sign-off and gets the full picture. All this data is presented to him, and he can compile, he or she can compile all this data, and according to the benchmarks and standards in our organization, decide if there is a go or no go uh, to the release. Um, how we do this, we also have a scheduled meeting, we also have a presentation, and we of course prepare to this meeting and see that all the forms are signed. So I just want to show you screenshots again of the release security release criteria because that's what our talk is about. Of course we have more release criteria. So first of all we have the executive summary uh, where we can see uh, how many critical high, medium and low items we have and of course calculate our security score. Then we have a form that tells us uh, what level we need to have approved that security score. It can be a PM, which is me, it can be an SPM, a VP, a VPPM, or whatever. And uh, we have the acceptance risk form, the waiver. Uh, this is another form. Here you can see only the first page with the process of the risk acceptance that the product manager has to undergo and answer uh, in order to either approve the risk or uh, return it into the backlog as an action item, of course. Now, we can't show you the whole form, let alone put it in the presentation, but as, this is just so you can read the process that a product manager has to do in order to accept the risk and to tell you that we have such a form and we advise you to have such a form, too. And I think that's it. That's the final stop in our journey and the mutual checkpoints. But why is it on form? What's the WIFM? 
The wood? The wood thing. What's in it for me or you? What's in it for me? Um, for security point of view, we gain information. Information is priceless. We have the information about the upcoming release and information about the roadmap at, at all. And we got it earlier. Be at the right place and right time to raise the security concerns, requirements, and depths from the previous releases. From the product point of view, we also get information, information from the security, from the development, and we can plan properly. We can manage the risks and we can control the consequences. And in addition, we get another view from we have uh, Product manager engagement. This is exactly what we want in the, our shift left movement. Security aware product manager. And from the product side, of course, we have the continuous alignment of the team and the continuous alignment of the content, which gives us flexibility. That's not me. Which gives us flexibility and a proper risk management. And we have even more. We will not drill down in every each of them because we have something more important. That's the company shared with us. We have stuff like cost reduction, efficiency, short turnover, collaboration, quick, uh, maintain customer trust, increase revenue, increase quality, decrease reduce, compliance, innovation, team cooperation, shared goals, and in short, money. And at the end, we want to provide you some general recommendation which you can take with you at, uh, at home and try to implement in your own organizations. So first, know your partner. Know your partner's limitations, timelines, and methodologies. Uh, find the common language which defines the shared goals. Take responsibility. Get out of your comfort zones and be each other's ambassadors. Make your all activities to reach this unicorn product secure lifecycle management framework. Meet and sync periodically. Have joint mutual checkpoints. Don't close your eyes. Communicate, listen, and break the wall. Use tool ensure that all your decisions are audited. And finally, formalize and brand yourselves in what you're doing. Infuse security awareness into product management in your organization. And finally, I want to leave you here today with a precious quote by Benjamin Franklin. A quote that we think best represents the shift left movement, which we are so passionately promoting in all our sessions. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And even more if we will work together. Winter is coming for those of you. Thank you. Questions? Questions? Yes. First of all, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> I'm being with me wrong. But I was sorry, you're right. Um, he said that as a product manager, it's quite abnormal for me to have the security awareness and uh, to get interest in security. And what was it that raised my security awareness? So, um, so I said I'd take it as a compliment that I'm abnormal. So the truth is, um, it was a process. First of all, I have to say it's Elena. Elena did this. <laughs> uh, when I first met her and I saw the passion and I saw the, the seriousness in which she treats this, I don't know, something just got me. And then we started to work together and invented this process. And we saw that it worked. And we saw that we got better security scores than the other groups. Uh, we saw that we're preventing stuff. Uh, there are many, many times where we saw that we needed to mint the architecture and the feature design uh, as a result of this. So it's only the practical you know, uh, tips and stuff that we did that made me uh, security aware. But again, I just fell in love with Elena. <laughs> yeah, I, I can add from my side, I had a lot of meetings with product managers on every level. Uh, pretty similar to the first thing as you see here, but we broke the wall at, at the end, but we have the successful pro process implemented. Yes. <clears throat> How much has this filtered out? Uh, it's, 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 it
So you can say in the HP, how much has this filtered out? That was the question. How much other groups do this? Uh, uh, really, in our organization, it's a common process for every product we develop in, in our business unit. It took us for years, but... Yes, it uh, took... Uh, I'm at current uh, position more than four years. It was a uh, challenge here. We have people who know that it was a challenge, but now we succeeded to embed it in our business unit in every release. And I must tell you that I'm working at Intel now. I worked together with Elena for four years in HP. And also our previous talk about integrating uh, security and agile projects as a project manager and now as a product manager, I take all these tools and insert them into Intel. So I can tell you it's also starting to work in Intel, but it's a small scale right now, but I'm working on it in my group. So yes, uh, the question was how long do the development cycles uh, have to be in order for this to work? So I can tell you when I worked with Elena, and then you can say what happened after I left, uh, we had the development cycles of a release every two months. And we've also done this, started to do this in a release every month. So it can be done. Sometimes we do the security assessment and the penetration that, uh, tests in the major releases like not every month, but in three months, but it does work in two months, I can guarantee. Uh, I can say it work in even one month releases. We have a couple of products with monthly deliveries. Uh, meanwhile, we don't have something short. Uh, we currently uh, investigate the possibility to work with agile principle uh, feature-based, feature down, feature tested, feature closed, um, but it's, we are not still there. And, and could you apply this because what, what you present is We are doing uh, security impact and trade modeling on, uh, on feature based, but a security assessment is going for every new content inserted, plus uh, uh, main uh, patterns, as I said, we always check in uh, authorization, authentication, communications, that it's not affected by new content. I think it also if you get the security ambassador uh, within the team, in our previous talk we talked about it, about it we ha you have your security champ champion within the team, it's a the developer that is uh, responsible for all the security elements. Maybe you can do this also in you know, user stories and bugs and, and take it even to smaller delivery, deliveries like in two weeks. Uh, but what we've practically done is one month. It would be interesting to try. Yes. How many projects can one security person do in <laughs> The question was how many security, uh, how many projects can one security person do in parallel? That's not the best person to ask. Agile based, as you just showed. Yes, agile based. Agile based, currently I'm responsible about uh, four products running in the fast delivery mode and uh, about four products in a legacy butterfly mode with uh, half of year deliveries in any case. But so, uh, it's hard. Four. Believe me, it's hard. We need more people. No. Yes, you need Obviously. more people. Yes. Well, Elena is not a... <laughs> we get hearts here from our team. <laughs> yes. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, sorry, again? The delivery time? What is the difference between the delivery time when we do agile based delivery and the uh, regular waterfall delivery? So I can tell you, and, and then we'll give you from her groups, I can tell you the waterfall delivery, we've had one delivery in six months or in a year. And uh, with agile, we've been once in a month and once in two months. Any more questions? Great, thank you.